Good day to all the attendees. My name is Chef Professor Anand Mittal. I am the principal of IHM Merit. Today, I am here to give you a presentation on HACCP, Hygiene Analysis and Critical Control Point. Even though HACCP has been in force since the early 1950s, but now in the wake of the current pandemic, it has become even more important, which is why I chose the topic. I had touched upon HACCP in one of the earlier presentations, but uh, that is what motivated me to go into HACCP in more detail. So without further delay, let us begin, please. The objectives of today's session are two, number one, to understand the importance of HACCP for the modern day kitchen and to know about application of HACCP principles. What is HACCP? HACCP is a system which identifies, evaluates, and controls hazards which are significant to food safety. Identifies, evaluates, and controls hazards which are significant for food safety. The full form of HACCP on the left is hazard analysis and critical control point. HACCP is an internationally recognized method of identifying and management food safety related risk. HACCP is a management system in which food safety is addressed through the analysis and control of food risks from raw material production, procurement and handling to manufacturing, distribution and consumption of the finished product. What it means to say here is that <clears throat> it is internationally recognized. It started in the USA <clears throat> in the 1950s. It originally developed as a program for monitoring hygienic food for astronauts. And from there on, it caught and why just astronauts should eat hygienic food? Everybody should get hygienic food. So it is internationally recognized and it is a system by which we can analyze all food risks right from production to processing to procurement to handling to manufacturing to packaging to distribution to consumption. So anybody and everybody who is involved in the entire cycle of the food from farm to the guest's plate should be trained in HACCP. So that is the main reason why today's presentation is being given so that people are aware about how to maintain the integrity of the food that they are selling. The objective of HACCP system is to help organizations identify the hazards that affect food safety, systematically analyze them, set critical limits, and establish control points. The first thing see the biggest problem in solving a problem is identifying the problem. Once the identification is done, then the solution is very easy. So the first letter of HACCP is hazard. Now what is a hazard? Hazard is the is the risk 
So the first thing that you need to do while planning HSCGP for your kitchen is sub first of all find out what is the hazard. The hazard could be that the supplier's truck is not clean. The hazard could be the eggshells are dirty or the hazard could be that the bags in which my vegetables come from the market has got cockroaches in it or eggs of cockroaches in it. So first thing is to identify the hazard. After the hazard has been identified, then we analyze. We analyze that how can we remove this hazard. And we think about it. And based upon the risk, the hazard, and our analysis, we determine critical. Critical means point of no return. So if the food passes that stage, then there's no way we can undo or redo. So critical means some a point which is essential, absolutely essential. So if we take the example of fish, for example, whenever we receive fish, it should be packed in ice. So one of the critical factors while receiving fish would be that it should be chilled. So we put a thermometer into the fish and we check the thermometer and the, thermometer and the temperature of the fish is near about 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. We record it that the fish received on so-and-so date was at so-and-so temperature. And then we send it forwards to the store or to the kitchen or wherever else. So that is the critical control point. And similarly, we establish innumerable control points in the journey of the fish from the sea to the guest's plate. How is HSCCP useful? HSCCP is useful because of these factors. Reduces the likelihood of customer complaints or dissatisfaction. So if your food is hygienic, then there is less likelihood of the customer complaining or being dissatisfied. You see, the trouble with our industry is that the real quality of food, whether the food was really good quality or not, is not determined by the taste or smell. I mean, of course, in the beginning, it is determined by the taste and smell and the appearance and everything else. But eventually, whether the food was actually hygienic and healthy or not is determined after the food is digested. And that is when the customer or the guest determines whether this is a safe place or not, depending upon how well his body has taken that food. So if the food is hygienic, there are less likelihood of complaints or dissatisfaction. Second, eliminates any human error during the journey of food. You see, God has made us as a bundle of errors. Human beings, they, we make so many mistakes in life, so many mistakes. Now, how do we eliminate these errors? By controlling, by creating checkpoints, like there are speed breakers on the road. Why are there speed breakers on the road? So that so that you are forced to slow down, you are forced to examine, to take a break from the high speed that you were traveling in. And when we create control points, several control points, then the chances of making a human error become negligible. Third point, it is mandatory in all countries by law. So that says it all, whether you like it or not, it is compulsory. And if you write in your CV that you are HSCCP trained, that carries a lot of weight. It helps the management in locating the trouble areas in case of mishap. More control points may thus be created in the future. So supposing there is an incident of food poisoning or food contamination. Now, how, how will the management know what went wrong where so it will look at all the control points that were established for that food and then it will locate the point at which human error or misjudgment or negligence or carelessness took place 
and it can appropriately take action against that. Now, for example, somebody ate your fish and got sick. Now, who made the mistake? So, we check all the control points and we find that at the control point, just before the pickup of the fish, the chef put the fish on the hot case at 12.30 and the waiter came and picked up the fish at 12.45. So, there was a 15 minute lag during which the fish went sour or the fish contaminated. So, the management can easily locate that the production time was much ahead of the service time which is because which is why the dish got spoiled and this contaminated. And then the management take, can take appropriate actions, maybe create more control points for the future so that it does not happen again and so that all the miscreants are appropriately punished for not following. Let us analyze each and every word of the abbreviation hazard. What is a hazard? A hazard is a physical, chemical or biological agent in or condition of food with the potential to cause an adverse health effect. So anything which is in the food or which in itself is a risk to the food is called a hazard. Anything that causes bad health of the consumer is a hazard. A critical limit is the maximum or minimum value to which a physical, biological or chemical hazard may be controlled. Uh, unfortunately, these are definitions and you need to really learn them properly because they are not to be altered in any way. A critical limit is the maximum or minimum value to which a physical, biological or chemical hazard must be controlled. And finally, a control point is a step or procedure in the cooking process at which control can be applied to eliminate or reduce a hazard to an acceptable level. Either the hazard be eliminated, removed altogether or be reduced to an acceptable level, to a level at which the food is not contaminated and it is safe for human consumption. What is analysis? Based on history, education, technical knowledge and experience of the chef and the hotel's microbiologist, every possible reason relating to safety of food should be carefully analyzed. For instance, if an insect was found in a dish, determine whether the cause was missing air curtain on entry, incompetent equipment, ineffective or expired insecticide, entry of gunny bags in the kitchen, use of contaminated food, or just plain carelessness of the staff. So there are so many places at which things can go wrong. It is not just one person, the purchaser, or say for example, the chef, or say for example, the waiter who's serving the food, or say for example, the person who's supplying the food. So it is not just any one person who's involved. The journey is very long. And the entire length of the journey has to be divided into several control points and proper documentation has to be done because it is very difficult to determine whether not so many examples are given whether the air curtain was missing you see it is mandatory by law that all entrance and exit of the kitchen should be protected with an air curtain now in the presence of an air curtain it is impossible for an insect to come inside so if the air curtain is not there and an insect was found in the dish, I don't think we should blame the chef or the purchaser or the receiver or the storer or the whoever else. We just, I don't think we should blame it. The management should understand that this incident has happened because there is no air curtain. 
Similarly, incompetent equipment or expired insecticide. Now you have sprayed insecticide all over the kitchen when the kitchen was closed, but the insecticide is expired, so it is ineffective, which is why the insect found its way into the food. Or for example, entry of gunny bags in the kitchen. Let me tell you, gunny bags are very unhygienic. Chewed bags, very unhygienic, they are absorbent and they carry a host of germs and stuff. So all gunny bags should be discarded at the receiving point and foods should be stored in plastic or steel or metal containers and then they should be washed and then kept taken to the kitchen not just like that the bag should gunny bag should never be allowed in the kitchen there are three things which are never allowed in the kitchen wood iron and jute gunny bags and cardboard four things cardboard is never allowed in the kitchen gunny bag is never allowed in the kitchen jute is never allowed in the kitchen wood and iron is never allowed in the kitchen they are absorbent they carry a lot of germs critical critical is a stage on which food contamination is possible such as preparation area dish or pot washing area improper grooming dress of the chefs prolonged storing of cooked foods etc so critical is the point or the stage at which food contamination is possible. Preparation area is the area where all that is done to food before cooking is done. So various preparation are cutting, peeling, chopping, grinding, centrifuging, emulsification, pureeing. So all this is done in the food preparation area. Food preparation area is very, very distinct from the cooking area. Even though it is located very close to the cooking area, yet it is distinct. From the preparation area, the next critical stage is dish or pot washing area. Now the chef has been very hygienic, the purchaser has been very careful, the receiving has been wonderful. But what if your dish or your pot is dirty? So the entire exercise goes a waste. So the next critical point is the dish and pot washing area. Improper grooming or dress of the chefs. Now the chefs should be properly groomed. The dress should be good. They should follow all points of personal hygiene. They should not be suffering from any disease or anything. And one more example of critical area is prolonged storing of cooked foods. You see, cooked foods should be stored for as little a time as is possible. Cooked foods should be cooked, should be kept very carefully outside the danger zone danger zone is a temperature between 8 degrees centigrade and 63 degrees centigrade so food should be either kept very very cold below 8 degrees centigrade or very very hot above 63 degrees centigrade but the point here is should we be storing food yeah considering the the nature of the hospitality industry it is very important for us to store food because we need to give a quick service to the guest but please try to minimize the storage time which means cook food at the absolute last minute as last minute as possible so that we do not give the bacteria time to grow and multiply one of the best ways of getting the food safe is by thorough cooking but what is the point in thorough cooking when after cooking you have given two, three, four hours for the bacteria to grow and multiply. So the last point was about prolonged storing of cooked foods, which should be avoided as much as possible. It is, it is critical to establish all such stages in the journey of food from farm to plate. The word essential may also be used in place of the word critical.
control points, breaks, any stage in the journey of food right from the beginning to the gas plate at which biological, chemical or physical factors can be controlled is called a control point. Any stage in the journey of food right from the beginning to the gas plate at which biological, chemical or physical factors can be controlled is called a control point. Control points are established after analysis and establishment of the critical stages at which food contamination may take place. Principles of HACCP to identify and analyze food hazards, biological, chemical, or physical. Identifying critical control points, raw materials, storage, processing, distribution, and consumption. To determine control limits and preventive measures, for example, minimum cooking temperature and time. Monitor the control points, establish corrective actions, record keeping, and verification, systematic audit. So these are the principles, seven principles of HACCP to identify and analyze the food hazards, to identify critical control points, to determine the con critical control points, to set them, establish them, then to monitor the critical control points, and then to establish cor corrective actions and the record keeping. All the critical control points should be doing record keeping. And last of all, an audit, which is verification. These are the seven principles of HSCCP that one has to follow for the general safety of the food. Like it was told earlier, there are three kinds of hazards, three kinds of risks that present themselves to food. The first is the invisible, microbiological, very small, can't see them microbiological. They can be bacteria, yeasts, protozoa, molecules, or viruses. Molds, I'm sorry, not one molecule. Molds or viruses. But out of all of these five, the most notorious is bacteria. Bacteria is the cause of more than 90% of the food poisoning. And it is very surprising to know that bacteria cannot travel from one place to the other. Bacteria have to be transported from one place to the other. Which means that when we touch food, or when we change the food from one container to the other, or when we, in any case we touch food, when we use the ladle which is infected, we are actually transporting the bacteria from one place to the other. So, these are the invisible microbiological hazards in food. Next comes the physical hazards in food. Physical hazards in food are given in the picture. Please read. Buttons, strings, nails, jewelry, bone fragments, feathers, stems and seeds, stones, hair, cigarettes, cigarette butts, physical hazards. These are the chemical hazards in food. Pesticides and residues, these are invisible. Cleaning chemicals, these are invisible. Veterinary residues, these are invisible. Adulterants, these are visible. 
you should be in a lookout for all the adulterants that may have been added to the food then non permissible food additives please read the food labels carefully and try to determine if all the food additives and everything in the in the packet in the container is approved by the appropriate licensing authorities excessive permissible additives more than permitted additives have not been added to your food these are certain chemical hazards in food visible biological hazards these are biological hazards which are visible you can see them such as worms fly weevils or ticks cockroaches and different kinds of insects critical limit checks there are certain critical limit checks which i have determined first is standard purchase specification what is standard purchase specification in standard purchase specification the executive chef takes a card sps card and he writes on it all the specifications that are related to the food for example if we take the case of oranges what are the standard purchase specification for oranges that the oranges should be five oranges per kg the color of the oranges should be orange the acidity of the orange should be mild it should not be very sour number 4 the oranges should come packed in cartons in each carton there should be 5 kg oranges and to maintain the integrity of oranges the, they should be separated with straws with perishable foods however the standard purchase specifications will also include the temperature of the food at the time of receiving the kind of packaging for example in the case of meat it should be packed in a airtight packing and it should be slaughtered on so and so date and it should be certified by so and so agencies and all these things are written in the standard purchase specifications standard operating procedures for receiving storing and issuing of raw foods have to be established and enforced strictly sop is for receiving storing and issue of raw foods that this is how you should receive this is how you should store and this is how you will issue the foods to the kitchen or the user department third permitted bacterial count in cooked food way back in 1998 when i was in the flight kitchen we used to dread the microbiologist because we used to be cooking we, i was a sous chef in ambassadors i used to be cooking and then suddenly some sneaky guy from behind would come and say sir chef can you please give me a spoon of what you are cooking and then i would give him a spoon and then he would take the spoon and he would analyze it microbiologically and after two days we would get the report that the food that i was cooking was a grade a grade means very good b grade c grade or d grade which is unacceptable and based on my hygienic standard of the food that i was making i was evaluated judged my future depended upon the kind of safety that i was following with my food so <clears throat> be prepared for the microbiologist to take a sample of your food and to check whether it is within the acceptable limits or not it is scientific it is full proof and it does not need any debate or discussion the number of bacteria found in your food you are answerable for that so this is one checkpoint then date of manufacture expiry etc this is integrated into the sps that the manufacturer should not be more than whatever whatever in the food should be within the expiry date limits etc refrigerator and main mary temperatures should be monitored by the hour every hour 
there should be a checklist at 9 am temperature of the walk in was you dip a thermometer right tuck 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 temperature of the refrigerator was meat refrigerator 2 degrees centigrade fish refrigerator 0 degrees centigrade vegetable refrigerator 7 degrees centigrade then again at 10 o'clock fish refrigerator 2 degrees centigrade so that during the entire course of the day we realize we know that things went wrong at such and such time because of such and such reason and such and such person so that we can take countermeasures you see the idea of blaming is not there the idea is to improve and how do we improve we improve by doing proper documentation by keeping record of things so that we can even after a week we can determine what went wrong last week at such and such time and who was responsible for this core temperature of cooked meats now this is another lesson which i learned very early in life that core temperature of cooked meat is very important <clears throat> how do you determine whether your meat is cooked or not very simple you poke a thermometer into the meat and if the thermometer has come if the temperature has come to a certain level the meat is cooked if the temperature is not say for example 63 degrees centigrade if the temperature is not 63 degrees centigrade you have to cook a little more and if you cook more than 63 degrees centigrade the meat will get hard and if you cook less than 63 degrees centigrade the meat will be raw you see this color pink when you slice thinly slice a roast beef a chateaubria of roast beef and the core of the roast beef is pink in color how do we get this pink color we get this pink color by cooking beef to a certain temperature now if you cook beef slightly more than that temperature that pink color will go away and if you cook that beef slightly less than 63 degrees centigrade that pink color will not be pink it will be red color so both the cases are not acceptable because the guest wants his food picture perfect and how do we ensure that the food is picture perfect by closely monitoring the core temperature of the cooked meats strict standards of personal hygiene safety of personnel food equipment must be observed strict standards of personal hygiene safety of the personnel food equipment must be observed Here I have tried to list the various control points in the kitchen. There can be many more, but in general, just to get you started. You see, the idea is to establish control points and then to learn, and then to establish more and more control points as the, or reduce the control points as the need may be. So the control point that I have established is. in the receiving issuing supervised hand wash at points of entry in the kitchen butchery pick up counter dish washing area core temperature of the cooked meats microbial check of cooked food should be done regularly and in the store refrigerator and freezers uniform etc check at the beginning of the shift vegetable preparation area cooking range equipment and its storage use of detergent and disinfectants supervisions of perishables or cooked foods that they are kept at room temperature having set up control in the kitchen it is now necessary for the staff to be trained all hotel staff should be hygiene trained as told by me in the beginning of this presentation that it is essential for all hotel staff to be trained in hygiene they should record their observations dutifully formally it is not just taking rough notes in some book no it has to be formed and formats and all their observations must be dutifully and formally be recorded and all these recorded documents are susceptible to audit 
HACCP audit, at every critical control point, the staff must be alert. Any deviation from the standards must be reported immediately. HACCP training program must happen with all food handlers regularly, periodically. Avoid cross-contamination. Cross-contamination occurs when bacteria and viruses are transferred from a contaminated surface to one that is not contaminated. The bacteria and viruses can come from people, work surfaces or equipment and other foods. You see, contaminated foods are those which are high in bacterial levels and safe foods are those which are low in bacterial level. That is contamination. What is cross-contamination? Cross-contamination is when a safe food is brought in touch with unsafe food and the safe food thus gets contaminated. This is known as cross-contamination. Now, as I told you earlier, bacteria cannot travel from the contaminated food to the safe food by themselves. They have to be transported. And the most common cause of transportation is us human beings. So we human beings, we transfer the bacteria from the contaminated food to the uncontaminated food. And this is known as cross-contamination. Cross-contamination can be avoided with a little careful attitude of the kitchen personnel. Avoid cross-contamination. Always use one of the ways to avoid cross-contamination is always use different colored chopping board for different food groups. So vegetables should be cut only on a green colored chopping board. For example, raw poultry and chicken should only be cut on a yellow colored vegetable, uh, yellow colored uh, chopping board. Uh, reddish chopping board for raw meats. A blue chopping board for fish and seafood, and a gray chopping board for cooked meats and bakery and pastry, a light green colored chopping board only for bakery and pastry. And similarly, black color can be used for some other food group. The food should never be left in the danger zone. What is danger zone? Danger zone is the temperature which is indicated in the red in the middle. That is the danger zone. It says 5 degree centigrade to 60 degree centigrade is the danger zone. Food in this range experiences rapid growth of microbial or bacteria growth. Avoid 5 degree centigrade to 60 degree centigrade. And just to give you an idea, 0 degree centigrade is mentioned, which is the freezing point of water. Freezing temperatures below 0 degree centigrade stop bacterial growth. And the highest range is 100 degree centigrade at which water boils. Major risk of HACCP, improper holding temperatures, cooking or preparing food before time, poor personal hygiene and grooming, inadequate cooking, inadequate cleaning and disinfecting of equipment, cross-contamination, improper use of leftover, and contaminated raw material. We have discussed most of these earlier, so let us move on. Conditions supporting bacterial growth. An anagram has been created by me called Fat Tom. If you can remember Fat Tom, you will remember all of these six points. Fat Tom, where F stands for our food. Now, you cannot take food away from food, so food is an essential. But all the other five are, you can avoid. A, acidity. The more acidic the food is, the lower it is below 7 pH, the more safe it is. And the more basic the food is, pH above 7, it is unsafe or risky. Similarly, high protein foods such as egg, milk and fish are very prone to supporting bacterial growth. 
so a is for acidity t is for time like i said earlier please do not give time to the bacteria to grow and multiply one bacteria will become millions in just a few hours so don't give time cook food at the absolute last minute that is fat and then tom is t is for temperature temperature of the food like i mentioned earlier should not ever be in the danger zone it should either be below 5 degree centigrade or it should be above 60 degree centigrade oxygen to avoid oxygen from spoiling foods or to remove oxygen from food we will have to pack the foods in air tight containers vacuum pack the foods in air tight packaging and in case we cannot vacuum pack them then we should have the air tight packets or containers filled with an inert gas such as nitrogen so that the food does not get in any oxygen the bacteria do not get any oxygen to grow and multiply and they die away and the food is safe and last but not the least is moisture no life is possible no life is possible without moisture so if we dry out the foods if we remove the moisture from the foods we are automatically making them safe then rules for safety of food good personal hygiene of staff identify potentially hazardous foods and develop safe methods to handle them procure supplies from reputed suppliers implement strict time and temperature controls avoid cross contamination in storing receiving and handling food avoid cross contamination of raw and cooked foods by hands equipments and surfaces cook or reposition to the safe minimum temperatures store or hold foods at 60 degree centigrade or higher or at 5 degree centigrade or lower chill cook foods to 5 degree centigrade within 4 hours or less and last but not the least reheat foods to an internal temperature of at least 70 degree centigrade moving on factors most often named in food bond outbreaks most often there are several but i have listed just these five failure to properly cool food food should be cooled properly how do you cool food if it is a sauce or a gravy please put it in large trays do not have your pots long and shallow and long and deep and narrow the food should be cooled in flat trays rapidly cooled today foods are cooled in blow refrigerators blow refrigerator the refrigerator in which there is air is blowing and the food gets cooked within a matter of minutes the food gets cooled cooled failure to thoroughly heat or cook food infected employees practicing poor hygiene principles at home and work preparing food a day or more in advance never adding raw contaminated ingredients to food receiving no further cooking you see cooking is the ultimate safety thing so if you have cooked the food properly you can rest assured that the food is safe to eat but after cooking if you add raw ingredients to the food which require no further cooking then you are increasing the chance of the food getting contaminated the safe food handler who is a safe food handler one who properly washes hands hand washing station and supplies hot and cold faucets hand soap sanitizing lotions single use paper towels and dryers hand washing technique was demonstrated in the earlier videos in the earlier presentation so i'm not showing it here again and care good work attitude attitude should be good 
otherwise the whole exercise is a failure we should use gloves and other protective gear masks and proper uniforms should be worn always that is the safe food handler history of hscp it was developed in the late 1950s by food scientists for astronauts like i said earlier it was developed in the us nasa for food astronauts but later on it caught on for everybody it became the law in the us in 1974 for all foods it has now been adopted all over the world and has benefit tremendously the benefits of following hscp principles are amazing trust you me adaptation of hscp in qsr quantity service restaurant standardized procedures training on food handling time temperature and personal hygiene cook potential hazardous foods to safe internal temperatures prepare only small batches of food in advance so whichever industry you are related to or aspiring to join please pay attention to these few slides in then food handling procedures in qsr standardized procedure regulate fat content size thickness of each portion to predict cooking time regularly check gas jets preheat grills for uniform temperatures consider prepack salads to serve self serve salads separate foods when packing them to avoid cross contamination and prevent temperature changes in institutional service what are the adaptation of hscp food choice use only approved commercially prepared processed foods never homemade or home canned foods pasteurized milk and milk products don't use raw milk for shell eggs cook until firm to guard against salmonella accepted amount of food additives and preservatives should be present in the food for institutional service again to keep foods safe while in transit use sanitized utensils separate foods when packaging them to avoid temperature changes or cross contamination use containers designed to maintain temperatures when transporting foods use delivery routes that do not emit high or low temperatures delivery equipment should be cleaned and sanitized reheat foods to 80 degrees centigrade or higher at least for 15 seconds then hold at 60 degrees centigrade or higher deliver cold foods at 5 degrees centigrade or lower in food bars and self service counters the adaptation of hscp is control display procedures amount served and customer behavior label all items so that the customers do not need to sample or return reheat foods to 80 degrees centigrade for at least 20 seconds and then hold at 60 degrees centigrade or higher hold cold foods at 5 degree centigrade or lower put ready to eat rte displayed foods on plate not directly on ice adaptation of hscp for food bars and self service counters check food temperatures every 2 hours use lighting that does not raise food temperatures of cold foods tongs long handled ladle should be used for each item plastic sneeze guards or shields should be used to protect the food from you no reuse of ice vegetables plant decorations soiled by food 
adaptation of hscp for outdoor service cold cold foods at 5 degree centigrade or lower check temperatures every 2 hours cold hot foods at 60 degree centigrade or higher for outdoor buffets or banquet buffets prepare small batches of food keep food pans covered whenever not in use display foods once only once they should never be reused for outdoor service do not mix old with the new put ready to eat displayed foods on plate directly not on ice use chilled plate to serve cold items so condiments such as ketchup in sealed containers provide wind screens to keep dirt and pests out of food set up food service area in clean and safe environment not near toilets along highways etc adaptation of hscp for central kitchens also known as the commissary kitchens equipment for keep for deep chilling large quantities of food at 26 degree centigrade to 32 degree centigrade refrigerators for short term storage at a food product internal temperature of 4.4 degree centigrade refrigerators for storing already chilled or frozen foods at minus 17.8 degree centigrade transportation purchase procedures look for suppliers who use properly refrigerated delivery truck train their employees in sanitation use protective leak proof sturdy packaging adjust delivery schedules so goods do not arrive during busy periods cooperate with your employees in inspecting food when it is delivered allow you to inspect their delivery trucks and production facilities receiving inspect supplies immediately upon delivery check delivery trucks for sign of contamination such as dirt melted ice etc identify the appropriate government stamp use thermometers to measure product temperatures sample all bulk items and individual packages within their cases log in acceptable goods only remove nails staples and fasteners as soon as boxes and crates are opened quickly move items to storage and reject unacceptable goods facilities and equipment control temperature in each storage unit maintain checks and logs let air circulate around food food should be kept in racks not in solid shelves the shelves should be racked let air circulate around for this enough slatted shelves should be provided food store in original packing as long as it is clean and debris free and last but not the least ensure disinfection of used equipment by the use of chemicals or hot water this is the second last slide of today facilities and equipment repack food in leak proof food grade non absorbent packaging with tight lids store food in correct storage areas keep food away from sewer and water lines drains and condensation drippings from pipes or ceilings clean and sanitize all carts delivery vehicles equipment used in this connection we move on to the last slide hscp this is about keeping food safe during preparation and service the first point is time temperature principle revisited 
the idea to keep food safe throughout thawing preparing cooking holding serving cooling and reheating the food should be kept safe throughout thawing preparing cooking holding serving cooling and reheating otherwise at any given point of time where we are careless or where we are negligent we can cause harm to the food we can make the food unsafe and thereby cause a tremendously bad experience to the guest once we lose a guest we will there are chances of never getting him back so we should be careful with our food we should keep it as safe as possible now just before we end i would like to add a little uh, word of advice of my own we are facing a very unique situation these days the current pandemic has forced us to be at home i have been appealing to all of you to not waste time and to utilize in developing yourself by attending training lectures seminars conferences meetings such as this and developing yourself keep yourselves prepared for the exams exams can happen any time this pandemic i assure you is not going to last it is here for a very short time and it will quickly go away in the end i would like to thank the management faculty and staff of ihm merit for enabling us to put this presentation together i am very happy today i am very satisfied today that whatever i wanted to say about hsccp has been covered in this show as teachers our job is very important to educate everybody even though our classrooms are limited only to our students yet we would like to educate everybody on planet earth on the various things that we know this presentation is not only meant for students but it is meant for all food handlers whether it is the producers whether it is the suppliers whether it is the people who pick up food from the various parts to the other parts porters or whether it is for chefs or whether it is for the fnb service people it is meant for all people who are handling food one way or the other and i would like to appeal to the government to make hsccp education compulsory for all food handlers with that note i would like to end this presentation please stay home please be safe please take care of your parents please take care of the people in the house help in the house and please devote time to your self development mentally as well as physically by yoga and exercises etc thank you and please have a good day